ready to start cutting in the angle on the side and I chose to do uh, 45. I believe that's going to be a standard angle to cut that in. I measured it with the angle gauge and it seems to be a little bit shy of that, closer to around 40, 42 degrees, you know, even though that's cast right there. But we're going to make it a, a 45 degree. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, this is the lock here for the tool head. And loosen it up. <clears throat> And then we should be able to just pull this sucker around just like that. I'm looking at my graduations over here and I'm going to bring this around to uh, 45. And this thing is, is about as close as the visions you can get on machinery whenever they did these, these old machines like this. So if you can eyeball those lines together, you know you're really, really close. So that's all we're going to do. We're just going to bump it. I got my little plastic hammer here. And I'm just eyeballing that 45 degree. And it looks like it's right on it there. So we're going to go ahead and lock it in right there. Trying to get you a little better shot of it right there. There's your zero mark and your 45. All right, I got the tool head all set up. Everything's ready to roll. All I got to do is uh, touch the tool off right there. I still got to set the uh, automatic down feed, but so this is going to be the setup right there. And we're going to be cutting in at a 45 degree angle. It's going to cut the top first before it cleans up the bottom, but that's, that's okay. That's what we want. Uh, get that edge cleaned up there. All right. motion and make sure we're in our right position. Zero down right now. Right, we're good to go. This one adjusts the amount of feed. I think we'll just go ahead and start off with 20. That'll be 20 thousandths down feed right there. Well, during that first cut there on the angle, I started noticing a problem with the machine. It, it started bumping somewhere. I wasn't sure what was up, so I stopped it. I knew something wasn't right, and I figured it out. So I've got this gib here uh, pulled out right here. So what was going on? Uh, I wasn't careful. This is another uh, learning curve for me right here, uh, tilting the tool head at an angle. I've had it, I had it retracted down too far and it was just clearing it as I was setting it up and just started stroking. But as we started making our cuts, what had happened was the bottom of the tool head right here just started rubbing the top of the uh, gib right there. That's what was uh, making that rubbing noise. And so it, it fed, you know, I don't know, two or three times it, it fed down. So it was coming back and it was hitting it harder. 
So I stopped the machine and, uh, and then saw that and saw that it had chipped out a little bit. So I've got the gib out of the machine that's sitting right here. So this corner right here, you can see where it was, uh, it was coming up just that far and hitting and coming back out. So it kind of mushroomed this cast a little bit and it had kind of chipped some of this out because I, I rubbed my finger in there and I was getting cast iron dust and chips out of there. But it also, I noticed as I was trying to move the, the ram back some, it was a little snug. I was real worried there for a sec, but what it is, it rolled this edge over right here. You might be able to see it at the tip of my fingernail. It's shiny. That's because the metal's pushed out, it's deformed. So it was real tight right there on that gib. So I've got to clean this up and get rid of that high spot right there. And that's what, I, I knew this was what the issue was. That's why I didn't want to run it anymore. I had to, I had to pull this gib right there. And uh, that's the first time I've ever pulled it out. So this is the first that we're actually looking at it. And it looks pretty nice. You can still see all the flake marks in there that the factory did. Uh, this was from where it was sitting for a very long time up at that other machine shop. It just had a little bit of corrosion up in there between the two surfaces from not being used for many years. And then we can, you can see it here also, right up in there, and a little bit of corrosion, but that's down inside the, the, you know, the pockets of the flaking there. So it's not really affecting, affecting it. So anyway, so here's some more of the dust right here. I didn't wipe it because I wanted to show you. So there's some of the cast iron dust where it was rubbing. So I wanted to make sure that this was all cleaned out, that there was no uh, cast iron in there and it started, because you could see right here where it was rubbing. That's what, I, I, I saw that and then I saw this right here. So I knew something was in there and I thought maybe it was a piece of metal in there is what it was. So I'm gonna stone this and make sure there's no high spots right there. And then I'm gonna start stoning this right here and uh, getting this little edge cleaned up and that's really all i should have to do and then have to put it all back together there's all the other parts for it right there so like i said just another learning curve of uh, using the machine there got to be real careful when you swing these tool heads here uh, where you are on your stroke if you're gonna you know i've got to i've got to set this so that i can come back this is going to come back into the main housing so i'm going to have to adjust everything and probably um, bring the tool head up further like this. All right, so we'll bring this up higher. I'll, I'll raise the knee up, bring the workpiece up a little bit higher and just uh, see if I can reset everything so that so I can make that cut there. I've been working at high spot right there. I started off with the file and just very gently tried to knock the high spot down and I've been using the uh, precision ground stones to uh, try to knock it down and polish it as I, as I bring it down. And I'm using the indicator here as, uh, using the indicator here to let me know if I'm still high right there. So what I'm doing, see that's a, that's a machined area of the gib. And as I sweep across, It comes up about a half a tenth. I'm, I'm sorry, half a half a thousandths now. That is a tenth resolution uh, indicator. So I've been doing this, you know, and I, I had it. I'm just showing you what I'm doing anyway. I had it a couple thousandths, and now I've got it knocked down to where it's pretty, pretty well even back there. I got a little bit more right in there, so I'll keep working it. Those low spots, that's the uh, that's the flaking. That's the oil flaking right there. It drops off. Right in there, it drops off. So just a little bit more right in there. Oh, I think I got it now. That's looking good. All right, well, we know we got rid of our high spot there, so we shouldn't be jamming up on the, uh, on the ways and the gib. So I'm gonna finish getting everything cleaned up, get the machine put back together. When I bring you guys back, hopefully we'll be ready to uh, start making our angular cut again.
All right, well, we've got the machine back together. We, uh, we got the give fixed. I got everything put back together. And while I've been at it, I've been trying to uh, work on the uh, oiling system, getting the wicking uh, tuned up more appropriate for what it needs to be instead of over oiling. So I'm gonna be continuing to work on that. And so I've done some resetting of the tool head here and where the tool holder is right here to make sure that whenever we start making our cuts, when this tool head comes down that we're going to clear here that we're not going to hit again so i was trying to maintain my setup where i've got now so that we don't have to re-indicate this or anything i was thinking maybe we would take the vise and try to bring it out just a little bit more this way we could have done that but it wouldn't have been enough to uh clear the tool head here it's got to come back a little bit further because of the length of the stroke here but really what this needed you know just to come out just a little bit further if i had the room so I wanted to show you, so we've got clearance there. This will, the tool will be all the way at the top of the cut right here. We just got the tool head, uh, tool head raised up in there. And go ahead and give it a stroke. This is really close, but this is clearing right here. All right. So go ahead and retract it back. All right, we'll bring the tool down. So that's gonna be about the bottom of the cut, somewhere about there. And you can see that I'm clearing here as well. So this is the problem. This is where it was hitting right up in there. So we should be good right there. And we're also clearing the tool here on the vise. That was, what, that was just something else you had to make sure that you're not gonna hit the vise there. So we've got plenty of clearance everywhere. All right, so everything's back in order. We're gonna reset and make a cut. Uh, while I was at it, the other thing I figured out was that I was getting low on oil too. I noticed the pump was starting to uh, pump a little bit of air up into the oilers. And uh, so locally, my, uh, I was able to get some oil here locally here at uh, RK Allen. And uh, this is the Chevron Maropa 100, which is the ISO 100 grade of oil. ISO 100 is what uh, should go in this machine here or you can use an SAE 30 weight um, gear lubricant as well. But really lucked out and found this and surprisingly it was uh, the same price as the multi-use 100 oil that I buy from McMaster Car. Uh, both of these from both places is about 85 bucks for the five gallon tail. All right, we're ready for some redemption. Let's give this another shot. We've got everything ready to roll. Got the cam plate set, there we go.
Everything's working out real well this time around. I like the finish. It's looking real good. It's got a nice smooth finish. And once we finish getting it rough, why don't I probably got maybe one more rough cut. I've been taking 50,000 to pass. I probably got one more rough cut to clean up here and on the other end. And then I'll take I'll take a light cut or maybe a couple light cuts at a slower feed rate to see if we can improve the finish. Although that that's actually really nice. So just real happy we finally got it going our way now. still got a couple low spots like right here I'm showing you on this end and the other end looks the same way down right down in here so I got to take another cut another roughing cut to try to get this cleaned up evenly we're almost there though I'm ready to make the final uh, finish cut on that and I want to just touch up the tip of the tool it looks good it's not got a burnt edge or anything but I am going to use my uh, diamond hone right here and just uh, hone the edge and hone the top and hopefully get it the best finish that I can without having to take the tool out of there and do any kind of grinding. So I just want to touch up that radius. I 
I just try to keep the, the stone flat so that it's all the way down the tool and I can look at it and see that I've got a nice hone all the way around that radius right there. Go over to the fine side. That'll kind of polish it out more. That looks pretty nice. Get the top of it there just the same. All right, we're ready to make a, a final cut. I just moved it over five thousandths and then I changed the uh, feed to eight thousandths down feed. machining is finally completed on uh, this uh, HKA24. I'm real happy with the finish on the uh, the angular section right there. I think that's going to be good. Uh, obviously it's not quite as nice as doing it with the uh, the flat tool up here on the top but it's going to be good. It's nice and straight. It's got a nice smooth feel to it and I like it. We'll, uh, we'll scrape it in from there. Only thing I'll have to do, I need to, I need to uh, run a file down this edge and just put a very, very slight radius on this and then uh, probably just hone it a little bit, get rid of that sharp burr from us doing the down cutting there. Also got to deburr the backside there, but real pleased with how it's going to come out. Uh, I'm not going to worry about cutting the ends here. I know that some guys uh, cut the ends and this could easily be done right here by uh, just rotating the uh, vise around 90 degrees and cutting it that way. But uh, I don't want to mess with my setup because I'm actually going to, after I clean all this up, I'm going to put the 18 inch straight edge that was given to me by uh, Tools for Machines, Gary Cude. And I'm, since this is all set up, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting that 18 inch and uh, get that one done as well. All right. Just working on the final uh, honing here with the uh, precision ground stones and I'm hoping uh, in that camera you can kind of see the uh, the shiny spots there where the stone is just kind of polishing it down. I got a nice even pattern across most of it. There's a couple places in the middle where it looks like it's just barely touching but it is touching there. It actually looks a little bit more uniform out here on this end and over here on this end but it looks beautiful. I'm real happy with it. This is another good uh, use right here, an example on how these stones are used. Just kind of polish it down and, and touch the high spots off.
We've already got the edge filed. We stone that as well with the coarse side there. Just kind of round that off and also this side right there. Got a nice soft transition on that radius right there. All right, so we're just about through with this and ready to take it out of the vise. This is our HKA24 straight edge. Let's do a sweep and see what the indicator tells us. I bumped the uh, indicator body right there. It's like we dropped down about a half a thousandths from end to end, maybe one thousandths in the middle. Let's go back. That looks like our lowest right there. It's right in the middle, about a thousandths. There we go. So that one looks like it's within one thousandths. All right, guys, all the machining and the filing and deburr and everything's done on both of these straight edges here. And uh, so this part of the project is now complete. I, I told you I wanted this to be a shaping project and that's just what that was. Um, I would have liked to have a better finish on this angle right here. So this is something that I've got to uh, experiment with more and uh, you know, play around with some of my tool grinds and the tool geometry when I'm coming in there on an angle like that to cut that. But this will be fine. It's nice and flat. And once we get this scraped in, you shouldn't be able to see any of that right there. As long as we got a nice machined edge on there, that's what we're looking for. So both of them turn out real nice. This one I thought hinged a little bit nicer. I did, I did take them down to the granite plate and I hinge them. And I just really love the way that looks right there. It's almost, I almost don't want to scrape it. It just looks so pretty with that finish on there. But that's what these are, is a, I wanted them to be a shaper and then a scraping project. So I'm going to be taking these with me over to the uh, Richard King scraping class in January. I had announced that a few videos back that uh, we're having another scraping class. And uh, that class is full, by the way. And uh, I'm going to take these over there. These are going to be my projects. I'll probably take the other 18-inch straight edge that Gary had given me. Uh, tools for machines. I'm going to take that one. So I'll have these three straight edges as my projects. Maybe you know take another angle plate or something. Uh, just to make sure I got plenty of things to uh, work on while I'm there. But I plan on taking video of the uh, scraping of these. I want to take video of bluing them before we do anything, just to see how these uh, check out on the uh, granite plate. See where the blue uh, ink will touch on this and indicate you know a high and low spot. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then just my uh, my training of uh, getting this, getting both of these edges scraped in, nice and straight and flat. And as well is uh, this guy right here. All right, I do need to put some paint on them, so I'm going to do that as well. I'll probably just show that off, or just do that off camera. Just tape this up down here, and uh, put some paint on there. Just <laughs> got to decide on a color, really. So I hope you guys will uh, tune in for the uh, scraping portion of this project right here. And I hope you guys have been enjoying this video and I hope to see you again real soon. All right, thanks.